It's incredible what some people can endure, and I don't mean in the deer woods, rather in life in general. And in November of 2013, we were so fortunate to be introduced to an incredible young lady who had not only endured, but overcome so much more than any one person should see in their entire life. That girl is one Miss Stephanie Hurd, a girl in love with the outdoors since birth, brimming with life and laughter, the kind of person who makes everyone's day around her brighter just by being there. However, at the tender age of just 24, while she was still celebrating the birth of her son, her family was dealt a terrible blow when her father was diagnosed with cancer. And then just two weeks later, the unthinkable, an enemy took a direct shot at that life that Stephanie was so full of, in the form of her own diagnosis, that she herself had an aggressive form of breast cancer. Anyone who has not been there, myself included, could ever understand how you would take that news, how you'd process that, and how you'd react. But I can share with you how our friend Stephanie faces such a thing. No sorrow, no self-pity, rather she reacted like a warrior, destined to beat cancer so badly that it would think that it came face to face with a real life superhero. She simply refused, refused to let cancer win, or even chip away at her positivity. She made the decision to be stronger than the cancer, and to be a real life superhero by taking it one step further and documenting her fight as an inspiration and motivation for others in similar situations. I am going to hunt cancer down and I'm gonna kill it. That's all there is to it. And then when I'm done with it, I might even just put it on my wall because that is a monster of a beast to kill and worth all of it. Some very nice ladies are going to give me a ride in a $3.8 million piece of equipment and I thought I'd show it to you guys. That right there. And that is what it's like to be Steph Strong. Against all odds, Stephanie did what was not likely possible. And after chemotherapy and over a dozen surgeries, she had beat cancer and was ready to return to normal life or at least as normal as life could be after what she'd been through. But like most stories, the end isn't when you'd expect it. And at a routine checkup only a couple of short years later, there was a suspicion that was later confirmed and cancer was back. This was when we learned about Stephanie's incredible story and her incredible strength. And we wanted to do something, anything to help. And we settled on helping through what we know best, deer hunting, to help raise spirits and as importantly, to raise dollars to help Stephanie and her ever mounting medical expenses as she battled cancer. We did what we had never done before and offered to take someone on a fully guided hunt with us for their very own dream buck. And Jason Peterson and I would personally film it for the television show. We did it through an online auction that received hundreds of generous bids. Through this process, we had our own heroes emerge in the form of two selfless, caring and giving people by the name of Mason Berger and Jason King, buying the hunts for several times the sticker value. Mason from Oklahoma, USA, an outdoorsman and a hunter, had just added being a hero to his resume as did Jason from Red Deer Canada, two people so giving and selfless that it renews faith in humanity for all those that know what they did buying that hunt to help Stephanie. Our other hero, and maybe the most giving of all, was our good friend and world-class outfitter, Mr. Lauren Fournier, who graciously offered the allocations and his entire camp and operation at Hunt and Hook Outfitters for this hunt at no charge, a man that we are all greatly indebted to. Our plan was set, and in just a few short months, our hunt would be on. You're watching Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail, North America's premier wild whitetail show. What am I going hunting for? For a buck. For a buck. Is it going to be a big one? Yeah! Welcome back. How time flies as it seems that in the blink of an eye it was time to get packed up for the hunt that was now here. Let's go pick stuff up. Fancy meeting you here. Yeah. You know, I heard that you guys were really good white tail hunters. Not me, just him. All country. <laughs> We left the airport with Steph and after a quick stop for a famous Canadian coffee at Tim Hortons, we headed north three hours to meet at deer camp for the week. Driving Stephanie through some of the most beautiful countryside in Canada, even the drive itself showed the healing powers of the outdoors and nature. The trip seemed short before we arrived at Hunt and Hook Outfitters in northern Saskatchewan. Remote but beautiful, Hunt and Hook is located in one of the top deer hunting areas anywhere in the world and not only world-class deer, but a world-class operation, and most importantly, it's run by world-class people. Hello there. Hi, Steph. Hi, Steph. Nice to meet you. Yes, pleasure. Beautiful place. Hey, Dean. How are you doing? Good, good. 
suntan in these days. <laughs> now at Camp and Settled, we got Stephanie's Excalibur crossbow unpacked to take a few shots to make sure everything was still lined up. But this wasn't just any Excalibur. It was a custom painted hot pink Matrix 335, a weapon definitely fit for a superhero. After a few practice shots, we headed in for a review of Lauren's hunting area and to look through some of the deer that had been on the trail camera, one of which Steph quickly fell in oh love with. Oh gosh, he's something else. He's a handsome man. Brow tines. That's all I see is brow tines. <laughs> Got my attention too. Oh, he's a good looking deer. The buck was a big, narrow, but tall 5x5 with giant brow tines and the deer quickly became Stephanie's focus. We're probably in the most remote whitetail stand in, in entire Canada. <laughs> I've got to be positive of it. But we'll see, there's a cool buck, there's a couple cool bucks here. Once there's a picture of the Lauren last night, there's one deer with big, big brow tines that I try to get a look at. Just at first light, our first buck made an appearance. A handsome young lad with multiple brow tines and great potential. I've always believed that everything happens for some reason, and proof that that's true was coming right now as I looked out of the blind only an hour into our hunt, and there he was. Not the big brow tine buck, but a definite shooter, mature with a giant body, heavy chocolate beams, a deer that we all dream of. And when he turned broadside, I looked away from the camera to Stephanie to make sure she was ready, and she was simply shaking her head. That's right, she was passing up this buck because it wasn't the big brow tine buck that she had her heart set on. And now as much as I thought this deer was a definite shooter, well, who was I to argue with a real life superhero? My nerves were already on high, hoping praying that this hunt would all work out for Stephanie, and watching that mature buck walk away, while well, it downright scared me that we were watching our chance of success walk away. Kind of caught us a little off guard. I didn't know the deer, Lauren didn't know that deer. It wasn't one of the big brow times. And uh, when he was walking away, Stephanie asked, we just make a big mistake passing the deer up? And I told her the absolute truth that maybe we might have. After the morning hunt, we got packed up and headed back to the lodge to meet up with Mason and Jason, who were just arriving. How are you? Good, good. Nice to meet you. Glad to meet you, Mason. You turned the wonders? Well, we were figuring we didn't know where the trail we were going. I'm Steph. Hi, Steph. How are you? Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? Good. 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 We showed some of the footage of that buck to Lauren, and Lauren said that's a pretty good deer. Yeah. We knew he was a pretty good deer, but we'll see what happens if he comes through here tonight. And we're still hoping to have a look at this one with the big brow tying. As luck would have it, the big buck made another appearance, and I'd thought with both Lauren and I mentioning that the deer was a shooter that Steph may not pass again. But when I glanced over at her from the camera, it was obvious and what I should have already known, that some of the strongest staff was sticking to her goal of an encounter with the Browtine buck. And that's right, for the second time now, we watched the buck walk away. And if my stress level was a nine out of 10 before that the hunt must work out, it was now at a 15. Back at camp, we all met up for a fantastic meal and to catch up on everyone's day.
we're going to try to put the whole day in a 12 hour set, which Stephanie is super excited about. Oh, yeah. With fresh snow having fallen overnight, the first year of the day is another young up and comer. After what I've nicknamed the cameraman cookie drought of 2014, the young multiple brow tine buck from the first morning makes an appearance. Only a two and a half year old deer, it's amazing what he may be in just a few short years. We're having a bit of dilemma with the radio. I'm trying to get Stephanie to put the radio away. It's one o'clock and I think we've seen nine bucks today. Seven of those bucks are new bucks, so we just want to stay. I'm trying to explain to that that's Lauren's radio for Lauren, I've shot a deer, we need a quad or I need a medevac because I'm desperately hurt it's not the sandwich radio it's not us, Steph needs a cookie radio it's not I've got three cans of pop on the floor beside the blind but I would like water radio I think it would work really well for that I'm recording this hoping to guilt her into just putting the radio away. Rule one of Deer Camp is It's quiet. I am quiet. We would have You want to use the radio to order cookies? <laughs> just shh. And a sandwich. The quieter we are, the more deer we'll see. And a sandwich. A sandwich would be great. <laughs> but that's not McDonald's. <laughs> I didn't say I wanted a Big Mac, I just said I wanted a sandwich. Let's shoot a deer and we'll have a venison sandwich. I would really like to do that. We gotta shh. Hey, shh. you wanna know what? Now that we had the radio put away and we're back on track, things were about to happen and happen fast. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate, learn, set up, hunt. Brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. A commonly asked question that we get is how we feel the moon phase affects mature whitetails and how we use that in our hunting plan. The answer is quite simply that we don't. Personally, I've never been a believer that the moon phases affect a deer's activities other than the one obvious point. The brighter the moon, the less daylight activity because if you've got a full bright moon in the sky, well those deer are going to move at night when they feel comfortable more than normal because they can see. With that said, when the moon's high and bright in the sky, we still hunt. We just understand that during those full moon periods that our deer sightings will be down. And that's your Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment for the week. This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. Welcome back. Before the break, the brow tine buck, the buck that Stephanie had her heart set on, had just made an appearance. There was no doubt that this time she was going to shoot. She was ready and the cameras were rolling. Well, 
There's your brow time buck. There's my brow time buck. I think you went down right on the hill, hey? I think so. <sighs> oh my gosh, I can't wait to tell Lauren. <laughs> yeah, he Jay wanted you to see that deer so bad too, hey? Yeah, Lauren and Jason and Jason and Mason. Oh, I can't wait to tell the crew. <laughs> Let's go find my deer. Oh, I've got some blood. And a whole tr Oh, there he is. I figured he went down on the hill. <sighs> I, <a> bunch of <laughs> I don't think he was going very far. <sighs> Look at the brow tines on him. <sighs> oh, he's a big body too. Oh, beauty. Oh, great. Dark horn, huge brow tines, eh? Yes. The one on that side's going to be 10 inches. What an experience. I mean, it's snowing 1,600 miles away from home or better. And this is what I get to come home with. It's a good, it's a dream come true. There's something about them that I really, really liked, and it was the brow tines. I mean, what a unique experience to be up here hunting and at Hunt and Hook. It was just, I mean, this is an awesome place. I want to come back for sure, hands down. What an awesome buck. Well, congratulations, Stephanie. Well, thank you. And thanks for being my camera guy. That's what I love to do. Words cannot describe the overwhelming feeling of gratitude that we had, that for a change, Stephanie got what she so deserved, that buck of her dreams, that deer that she had traveled over 1,600 miles to northern Saskatchewan to hunt. But this was so much more than a hunt, and it's far from over. So please tune in next week for part two of our superhero exclusive, featuring Mason and Jason's hunts, where Stephanie finds herself standing in as Mason's very own camera girl. We'll see you next week.